I need help passing the FE exam is something that a lot of engineers have said, right? Especially engineers that try to take the exam far removed from school. In this week's episode of Pass the FE Exam, you're gonna hear a conversation between Matthew Douglas. Matt is our operations and QAQC leader um, at EMI. Matt is removed from school. He has a full-time job. He has three young children, of course and he's studying for the FE exam with the help, thankfully, of our sponsor, PPI Kaplan, who's given him access to their FE review course. But Matt's frustrated, like all engineers get. He's anxious about the exam. So he gave me a call with some specific questions that he had to try to help him get through it. He only has three months left to go. And in today's video, I'm going to share that conversation with you because he did ask some really good questions about study prep and these last three months and how to attack them. And we're going to go through just that. Now, before we do that, I do want to give you a quick word from our sponsor, PPI Kaplan. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the FE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for FE exam prep. Let's dive in. My name is Matthew Douglas and I am currently drowning <laughs> and I'm not too afraid to admit that at this point. It has been a very, very rough couple of months trying to prepare myself to take this FE exam. I'm going as fast as I can, sir. And I know that at the end of the day, it's going to get done, it has to. But I cannot say that this is the easiest thing. Like this is probably by far the most challenging test. Not even test like in the sense of like the physical test, but like the test of like my own character and my own self. Where's your work for today? I need to buy one. Where are my deliverables? Chicken. Good work. Go get me some coffee. This is the toughest life test that I've ever taken thus far because of my lifestyle. You know, I have a family. I have three children that are all young below the age of six. I have a wife at home as well. Within the last couple of months, I just had a recent job change and I joined the Engineering Management Institute's team as their operations leader and there's been a learning curve with that as well. And it has not been the easiest thing. There are so many different things that are hanging in the balance of my lifestyle. It makes it hard to carve out specific time for studying for the exam. So I encourage anyone that's looking to take the exam to please take it as early as you possibly can. Take it seriously. Use as many resources as you possibly can. Because once life really starts going, there's really no stopping it. So today I'm going to take a conversation with Anthony Fasano. And hopefully he can give me some tips on how to better manage this and come out on top. Hey Matt, what's up man? How's it going? Hey, how you doing? What's uh, what's going on? Good. Uh, I'm having a bit of a crisis here <laughs> studying for this FE exam. Um, I can't say that this has been the easiest process at all, really. Um, it's it's kind of just really tough right now because I mean, like you know my situation. Um, you know, recently just moved, recently just started my new role, and trying to. Uh, really get a flow with how I want to study for this exam. Um, I mean, I have it scheduled for design because, well, for uh, for, for July, 
because I figured that, you know, I might as well just, you know, my money where my mouth is and just get it scheduled out. Um, that way I can uh, say like, okay, well, there's no excuses. We got to get it done at this point in time. But even with that, it's just kind of hard getting the rhythm down because of all of the other obstacles that I have. I mean, I don't want to call them obstacles, but, you know, it kind of just is because, uh, you know, everybody wants their own dedicated time and that kind of uh, interferes with me having like a dedicated and set concrete schedule of when I'm actually going to get studies done. Um, so really, I'm just trying to just get some advice on, you know, like what it is that I can do to change things around and I can be ready by the time that July comes around. Yeah, no, I hear you. I mean, listen, you got a full-time job, you have three kids and uh, young kids, right? So it can be challenging. And I think the other challenge a lot of times with the FE exam is it's stuff that, you know, you're, you've been out of school now for a little while. So it's stuff that you really got to dig back in and kind of relearn, if you will, um, which is what it is. I mean, you know, you're at the situation you're at, like you said, you got to just go for it and do it. I think the one thing that I would say with regards to like the studying or the scheduling and things of that nature is really setting a time, like a dedicated time to, to study every day. I think that's really important because, you know, it's one of those things where you're in demand and unless you set the time yeah. and you stick to the time, you're going to get stuff in your way. There's going to be people there. There's going to be kids. There's going to be phone calls. So I can only tell you what I did. I mean, well, I took the FE exam at my senior year kind of in college. So we had like a review course at school. But when I took the PE exam, I was in a very similar situation to you where we had just had a newborn and I had a full-time job. And the only thing that way that I could really do it was I had to study really early in the morning, like set my alarm early, get on the kitchen table and study for like an hour every morning or 45 minutes. Or I would do it late at night. Kind of when everybody went to bed, I would just like bear down, get on the table. But what I did though was I did schedule it. Like I did literally put it on my calendar because to me, like we have all this stuff on our calendars, right? Like work meetings, kids have to go places. Right. But, but sometimes right. we don't think about th something like this as important enough to actually put it on our calendar. So for me, I was like, listen, I've got to get this on my calendar just like I have everything else on my calendar. And I did that. And to, uh, to be honest with you, that was like really helpful for me um, because it just became like solidified for me. And it was like something I knew I had to do. It was on my calendar. I wasn't going to let it slip. And for the most part, I did it. And once I got in that rhythm and like every week when I set up my calendar, I had it on there, I guess it kind of made me feel like it was more something that I was committed to do. Well, a question I had for you is, so like I have three months left to study for it. Um, my test is scheduled for July 8th. So it doesn't, so it's a little bit less than three months, actually, now that I think about it. Um, what tips do you have for like overcoming the anxiety for it? Because I mean, like I've been at it for a little while now. Um, with the three months left, I'm feeling like if I don't make a sudden change to my patterns, then like I'm probably not going to be ready. And I'm going to either need to delay the exam, but I don't want to do that. I kind of want to just get this thing out of the way. Like, but I'm feeling anxious about it. Like, how do I get through that? Like, what tips do you have? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. And I think, I think a lot of people with these exams, both the FE and the PE exam deal with that. And I think the one thing I've found that's always helpful with anxiety is, you know, preparation, right? If you prepare and you feel like you know your stuff, you just become more calm because you get more confident, right? I think like confidence reduces the anxiety. And so what I, what I would do to back up from there is going back to what we talked about just a couple minutes ago is making sure you have that good study schedule, making sure that you're doing it consistently. And then I feel like day after day or week after week, you're going to get more confident in yourself and some of that anxiety would go down. Um, I also think the fact that you're doing the course, the PPI Kaplan FE review course is very beneficial because I think a course gives you a good structure in place and materials that you can lean on as well, which also sometimes helps you for confidence, oh, yeah. right? Keeps you on track and stuff like that. Um, so that's really, uh, my, I would say my biggest piece of advice in terms of anxiety. Man, listen, I think you're not going to be a normal human being if you're not anxious about an eight hour exam. I think everyone has some level of anxiety around that. But I also think that there's value in, you know, digging deep for three months, 
doing the best you can, taking oh. the exam. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. You get back on the saddle, you do it again. But at least you've kind of pushed through it once. And I think even if you did take it and it didn't go well, and let's just say you didn't pass the exam, I just think the experience of taking it can also reduce anxiety the next time you take it. It's a great point. I never actually thought about it from the perspective of, you know, if if first you don't succeed, try, try again. You know, <laughs> never thought about that. Um, okay, no, I that's good advice. Um, I'll definitely take that to heart, and I'll also take into um into account scheduling. Um, I can admit that. Um, I went through the the motions of like making a schedule on Excel. But not having the schedule actually in my phone, it's like the schedule in Excel is kind of just null and void unless I actually have it like, okay, ding, 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 time to study statics, you know, like it's just completely different. So um, I'll start doing that. Start doing that. So PPI and the way that they have the courses is set up is really, really awesome. I really, really do enjoy the setup because like we get onto the dashboard, which is cool in itself like who really has a dashboard out there for like your learning um for preparation for the exam so like, and on there uh there's the course there's slides there's um the slides with the write-ups from the instructor you can have office hours with the instructor um you have uh quiz cards pop quizzes well not pop quizzes but like diagnostic exams and homeworks um so with all of that being said what do you suggest? How do you suggest that I study? Like what tips can you actually give in regards to like, how do I prioritize what to study first? And then like, how do I uh, succeed that throughout the whole entire process to get ready in three months? Like how do I utilize my time the most effectively uh, right now? So here's again, I can give you a share a little bit of my experience with you, what, what worked well for me. And, and obviously you have the advantage of the PPI course, which is great to help with this. But I always tried to tackle like a section of the exam by saying I'm going to spend maybe like one night or one hour on the theory behind whatever it is, whatever the topic is, and read that chapter, maybe take some notes, highlight it a little bit, or if it's on the computer, take some notes on it. And then either the next day, or the next couple of days, then I would do problems associated with that topic, right? So it was like, understand the theory first so I can kind of figure it out. But then next, I have to do the problems because the problems is what you're going to be facing on the exam and you've got to do as many as you can. And then what I would say is as you get closer yeah. to the exam, like a couple of weeks before, which I'm sure PPI is going to steer you on, that's when you got to really start doing the practice exams and in a timed setting. I think this is a really important point because a lot of people – just will keep doing problems and problems and problems, which is great. But the whole thing about the test is you're under pressure. You're under stress of the time. So that being said, you need to practice under pressure leading up to the exam. So when you get into that exam yeah. room, it's not something that's different. It's not, it's not at your kitchen table without any timer. It's with a timer, right? And I think that that's kind of the general approach that I would recommend taking. Wow, that's also another great tip. Um, didn't think about that. Uh, just simulate, like having that simulated pressure is definitely going to, you know, prepare me so that I can like actually start getting a flow for like how long I should be spending on every single problem. Um, I know that was like another huge tip that I've seen off of YouTube. Um, I think it was on on the, uh, the uh, EMI channel, actually. Um, like, you know, timing out the questions. I think it's about... Uh, maybe two minutes or three minutes per question. So like kind of just getting a rhythm and like being able to do like a, a mental count in my head for like how much I, I should actually spend. And then, you know, um, doing that on the simulated exam and doing the practice exam like three, four different times, that'll probably help me out a lot. So I appreciate that advice. Yeah, man, listen, I know it's not easy, but you're committed to it. You've got the course to help you. I would say get stuff on your calendar, stay focused and consistent over the next three months. And if you need anything else along the way, just give me a buzz and we'll, uh, we'll talk through it. Okay. Um, well, I can't say that this is going to be the last time I'm calling you, but, um, you know, uh, I definitely appreciate the advice and the time and, um, uh, yeah, we'll get at it and, um, stay positive and see how it goes.
All right, man. I'm here if you need me. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Sounds good. All right. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Matt in this video. It's real, right? This happens to a lot of engineers, FE exam, PE exam. You're working. You might have a family or you might be a student who has exams and other things going on. This is a bear of an exam. It's eight hours and it's not like you're going to be just studying for the exam and doing nothing else in life. So I hope that this video along with our other videos can provide information and inspiration for you to tackle this exam because if you pass the FE and if you pass the PE and if you get that license, no one can ever take it away from you and it'll make a big difference in your career. And please leave comments and ask questions below the video and we'll respond to them. We'll read through them, we'll answer them in another video. We are here to help you. And I'll see you next week on Pass the FE Exam.